So if you have a vehicle and you think you have a bad transmission shift solenoid, I thought I'd go over the symptoms of a bad transmission shift solenoid, how you go about finding out if that is the problem, and how you go about fixing the problem. So first of all, what is a transmission shift solenoid? Well, it's basically just a small solenoid that allows the transmission to shift gears at the correct time. There's going to be multiple transmission shift solenoids. Usually you'll have like shift solenoid A, which would be for first gear, shift solenoid B for second gear, shift solenoid C for third gear, and things like this. So there's going to be multiple solenoids inside of a transmission. And it's fairly simple the way they work. They basically have a coil built into them. And when the computer sends voltage to it, it energizes it, which is going to pull down on a plunger. And that's going to allow transmission fluid to flow past it, which is going to go on and work with pressure to enable the gears. And so that's a real quick basic overview of what they are and what's going on with them. But they basically just allow the transmission to shift gears at the correct time. And so what would be some symptoms of a bad transmission shift solenoid? Well, the first symptom is you're very likely going to get like a check engine light or you'll get some kind of transmission light or even like a warning message up on the dashboard, something like check transmission or something like that. That's very common. Sometimes when this happens, not all the time, but sometimes when this happens, the vehicle also goes into what's called limp mode. When a vehicle goes into limp mode, it's basically not going to be able to go over like 40 miles per hour. It's going to move real slow. And if that happens to you and a vehicle is inside a limp mode, you basically just want to get it off the road as quick as you can and park the vehicle until you can figure out what's going on with it. But some vehicles will go into limp mode. And the most common problem when you have a bad shift solenoid is going to be that the transmission is not acting the way it should be. And so this is going to be something like a delay, a hard shift. It might not be shifting at all. It might be stuck in a gear. It could be skipping gears. The shifting might be erratic, or you might be able to feel it slipping or something like that. Those are all very common symptoms with the bad transmission shift solenoid. Of course, if you have any of those problems, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is a bad shift solenoid, but those are common problems that people have when there is a bad shift solenoid. Okay, so you think you have a bad shift solenoid. How would you go about troubleshooting it? How would you go about finding out what the problem is and if there is a bad shift solenoid? Well, the first thing to do whenever you have any kind of transmission problems really is go check the transmission fluid if possible. Some newer vehicles now, they no longer let you check the transmission fluid. There won't be no dipstick. But if you can check the fluid, go check the fluid. Be sure it's not low because low fluid will affect all these shift solenoids and they won't be able to work correctly. And so first thing to do, go check your transmission fluid and be sure it's at the right level. You can also check to see if that fluid's dirty because if the fluid's really dirty, or it got contaminated somehow, or something along these lines, then that's going to cause problems. There's also a transmission filter that's built into the transmission. If that gets clogged up, then that's also going to cause problems. So if you can't check that fluid and it looks really dirty, it might be a good idea to go ahead and have that fluid changed and that filter changed. Because if the fluid's bad, or it's contaminated, or if that filter's all clogged up or something like that, then that transmission's not going to be able to work the way it's supposed to. So the next thing on the list is that if that fluid is dirty or has been not changed in a very long time, it's due for maintenance. And if possible, have that fluid changed and that filter changed. And the next thing you could do is you can use an OBD2 scan tool, and you can scan the vehicle to see if there's any error codes. If one of those shift solenoids is having a problem, you very likely are going to get a code. For example, you get like a P0746 pressure control solenoid A performance stuck off. Or you might get like a P0776 pressure control solenoid B performance or stuck off. But if one of those solenoids is having a problem, you very likely will be getting codes. One thing to mention is be sure that your scan tool can read transmission codes. Because some scan tools, they only read engine codes. And they'll read like basic transmission codes, but they won't read all of them. It can vary. It's going to depend on the scan tool. If you don't have a scan tool or you don't have a good scan tool, quite often automotive stores, they'll come out and scan it for free. You might want to call around first, but places like O'Reilly's or AutoZone or things like that, it is very common for them to come out and scan the vehicle for free and just tell you what the codes are. If you need a good OBD2 scan tool that can read transmission codes, I'll put a link down below in the description. But basically, the next thing to do would be to scan for any codes that might be on the vehicle. And then, for example, say you did get this code, P0776, pressure control solenoid B, performance or stuck off. That would mean the shift solenoid B, which is usually for second gear, is having some kind of problem. So the next thing you do inside of this example is that you get a diagram where all those solenoids and parts are located in your transmission. Well, for example, on this vehicle, it's right here, the clutch pressure control solenoid valve B. It would be located right here. You'd have to go drain the fluid, drop the transmission pan, and then check out this shift solenoid B. There's some different ways to test those solenoids. A very common method is that you look up what the rated ohms are for that shift solenoid. So say that shift solenoid is rated for like 8 ohms or something like that. You go set your meter on ohms, you check it, 
And if it's not close to that, then very likely that shift solenoid's bad. But that would be the thing to do, would be go and test that shift solenoid and be sure that it's good. Another thing to keep in mind is check to see if you're getting voltage to that shift solenoid. Because if there's anything wrong with the wiring going to that shift solenoid and open, a short, there's a bad connection somewhere inside of there, then that's going to cause the same symptoms as a bad solenoid. So it's a good idea to check the wiring for the voltage going to it, which is usually like 12 volts. Again, you would have to get a diagram and schematics for your particular vehicle to know for sure what's going on. But it's very common for those to get 12 volts to them. The last thing on the list is going to be a bad computer or that transmission control module. A lot of people worry about this. They go through, they check everything, and then they think they got a bad transmission control module, which does happen sometimes, but it is fairly rare for these to go bad. Usually it's something else, one of these other things, like a bad solenoid, something in the wiring, the fluid was low or contaminated or something like that. But it is possible that that transmission control module failed. It does happen sometimes. One thing you could do if you do think you have a bad transmission control module or any bad computer inside of a vehicle, really, is check and be sure that your battery is good, all the connections are good, the alternators charge it correctly. Because all these computers, they all need a good, stable power supply going to them or it's going to throw them off. It's going to cause them to do weird things. They also all need a good ground wire going to them. So if you think you have a bad ground wire, you can use like a jumper and just jumper to it and see if the problem clears or something like that. But like I said, it is fairly rare for some kind of issue to be with the computer, but it does happen sometimes. So the last thing to go and check is going to be the transmission control module. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to go over the symptoms of a bad transmission shift solenoid and how you go about troubleshooting the problem and fixing it. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.